Hello everyone, it's Linda Hayes coming to you from San Pedro, Belize. I want to talk today about whether you can rent your home in Belize out if you're buying something for investment property because the rules have recently changed. So this is a critical update for those of you who are doing rentals or considering doing so. So I put the link to the article that came out from the Belize Tourism Board. So this change was announced on April 11th, 2022. And basically what it does is that says even long-term rentals are now required to be registered with the BTB and remit the 9% hotel tax. Previously, this only applied to stays of less than six months. So basically I've mentioned in previous videos that Airbnbs are treated exactly like hotels in Belize in terms of the licensing, everything else. That's why it takes a long time. So that's actually why I put my tiny homes on the long-term rental market, got tenants into them so that I could be in the process of getting the hotel license in the meantime. And now that this has happened, it changes what people need to do and consider when they're buying property. So the new rule is basically for tourists that renew their stay every 30 days. Basically what you do when you're staying 12 months to do your permanent residence because you have to be in the country for 50 out of 52 weeks. And basically you go to immigration every month and pay $200 Belize and you can then stay in the country for 12 months and apply for your residency. Now, the new rules are basically saying while you're doing this, you need to be staying in the BTB approved accommodation. There is an exception if you have friends or family living in the country and you're staying with them, that's okay. And the BTB also says that this is because uh, they don't want residential rentals used for people that don't have appropriate immigration status. So permanent residents, QRP, work permit, student visa, et cetera. So you are able to get QRP before you're even in the country. So I have a neighbor that just recently did that and just came to the country. But for permanent residents, of course, you do have to be here 12 months before you can apply. So let's talk about the impact of the new rule. So basically, tenants will now have to pay an extra 9% tax on their rent, even if it's a six-month or one-year lease and properties then need to remit the tax to the government. So if you are an owner of a property that's rented only long term, you also have to register with the BTB. And the one thing to note though, is if you own a property or, consider buy, or considering buying in a resort, so for example, the Hilton in Mahogany Bay, um, Grand Caribe, the Yacht Club, Grand Bayman, those are a few that are already gold standard and there's many more um, that are as well. So if you own a unit in there, those resorts already have a hotel license, so you are fine. You don't have to worry about this at all in terms of the registration with the PTB, which I'm going to talk about the process. It is definitely uh, not as easy as people may think, and I will talk about um, some of the misconceptions as well. The other thing is, is it doesn't apply if you're renting to locals, permanent residents, people, etc. But the, the thing here is, is that to get permanent residents, you have to stay here for a year first. So the rule is a little bit odd in that regard. So when you're looking for a um, property to buy, you might consider that. So before these rules were implemented, you needed a hotel license for a vacation property in Belize. So basically running an Airbnb was just like starting a hotel, which obviously doesn't sound all that easy. And the way you could get around this is to do long-term rentals. And the demand in Belize is huge for expats and nomad workers coming into the country. So there's tons and tons of opportunities for people that want to do long-term rentals. Now, the thing with this rule is that Oh, not only is there the tax component, but the licensing procedure is what is the real problem. I took a couple of quotes from a property manager in Placencia that I've been talking to, and they have a quote talking about the fact that the process involves approval from four government entities before it reaches compliance and inspection department of BTB. And there can be pretty severe penalties if you are doing rentals without approval, although I've talked to many people that says if you're in the process of doing your approvals, they're not going to be as picky about uh, what you're doing. Uh, but it, I want to talk about the process. How long does this take, first of all, to get a BTB approval for a hotel license? Well, from my perspective, I can tell you I started my process in September with a person I was referred to, and it's still not complete. So I have a trade name done. Um, I talked to her actually today and she's saying the fire inspector hopefully will be coming out next week to do my inspection, which is required before you can even get your trade license. And that's the first two steps, not even, that's not even uh, all of the steps, which I'll talk about. 
So one person I talked about, uh, talked to recently says it takes five to seven months on average to get a hotel license, and that's Josie Dawson. So you may have heard her speak on one of Dennis Kay's videos, and she actually um, was someone I talked to that was very realistic about timelines, and I've um, talked to someone recently that actually did use her very successfully for their QRP. So I'd highly recommend using her if you're looking either for QRP or for a um, or for this process for the hotel license. She's one person that does do it. So another person I talked to said six to eight months. That's the property manager in Placencia. And there's a realtor that uh, we like on the island here who said nine to 12 months. So it all depends on what you've seen. You know, there's there's many different examples. I can't tell you how long mine's going to take. But if you hear someone telling you that this is an easy process or that it is quick, you probably want to consider the source of that because I've talked to many owners that are going through this and I've, ha I've had examples of people saying they expect it to take a year as well. So when you're buying property, what should you consider? So if you're buying a house and it already has a hotel license, you may wonder if it's going to transfer to you as the new owner. And the answer to that is no. Some parts of the process are transferable and others are not, which I'll get into more detail on. Now, if you buy in a resort, like I already mentioned, it often has a license for the whole development. So that's actually a good thing in the fact that you're not going to have to wait for your rental income. If it's already part of a rental pool, you can start cash flowing immediately. But sometimes you may want to rent out the property on your own, and that may not be possible. So you want to make sure about this from the get-go. So you may have a property where the strata rules just don't allow you to rent it out separately. So many condos in Canada are that way, and the same thing happens in Belize. In the other case that might you might see is that there's a development that already has a hotel license, and the BTB will not allow another one. So I've heard examples of Mara Laguna where people want to rent out their house on their own, but because Vacasa, which is the rental manager, has the hotel license for the entire development, including the condos and hotel, BTB is giving them problems on being able to rent them out separately, even though they're individual homes. Okay. So what you want to consider here when you're buying property is if it's for investment purposes, make sure you have cash flow to cover the expenses until you're able to rent it out. So if it's in a resort, you want to ask, hey, is it already in the rental pool? And if not, when is that going to happen? And what expenses do I have until that time frame? If I'm building a new property, how long is it going to take to build it? Because I have outflows of expenses during the build. Again, no cash flow. So same thing here. It's just you might not be able to rent it until you have your license. And we're going to talk about, of course, uh, how you can expedite the process as much as you can to be able to kind of mitigate it. So what are some of the steps in the process of getting a license? So I actually talked to four different people uh, to be able to prepare this video on how the process works. And I still am by no means an expert and I would never do this on my own. That's why I hired someone. And if you do need a referral for help, definitely reach out because I can kind of give you some pointers on this. And definitely in addition to that, um, before you buy a property, figure out if you can even get a hotel license. Is it, does it have strata title? Is it in a resort? Um, do you have to use their rental management? Uh, that's all questions you should be asking. So you need a trade name and trade license. Those can be transferred to a new owner, but the other things um, next, like the hotel license, cannot. So there's also fire inspections and environmental inspections that are required. So in the past, I did recommend doing long-term rentals while you're waiting for a hotel license, but of course, now you need BTB approval for both. However, the BTB may be more lenient if you're already working on the process. So if you can start it soon, uh, even before you do the rental, so for example, if you're building a property and you get started on your trade name and some of the other requirements early, that would be better. So if you need uh, consulting on this, definitely reach out and I can give you the information I have and also refer you to someone who can help with the process because certainly this was not something I wanted to do on my own. 
So as I mentioned, the process is quite detailed and I put a little snippet of the requirement checklist of all the different paperwork that you need when you're applying for the hotel license. And I also put a link to a YouTube video that was actually prepared, I believe by someone in the Belize government, it might have been the BTB, but it's a 51 minute long video that goes through the process. And my property manager said that that's already out of date, but I just wanted to put it there. Uh, if you do want more details on a lot of the different requirements, it will be in there. And as I mentioned, there are qualified people that can help with the process and just make sure you add that cost into your budget for the purchase of a property. Uh, I've heard uh, different prices from different people, but for example, uh, one person for the hotel license that I talked to would charge $1,750 US dollars and then extra for the gold standard and $2,500 US is a common number for both that I've heard. And so, you know, if you need referrals on that, just certainly let me know and I'd be happy to give you information. So if you're going to rent out a property and you buy it and have a little bit of a long possession date, or if you're building a brand new property, there are some things you could start early. So you can get a trade name registered. You can also get your business sign ordered because all the uh, businesses um, have to have a sign, including houses that are operating under rental. So I kind of wondered when I came to the island why a lot of houses had names and now that I realize that they have to be approved by the BTB and have a sign, it kind of makes a lot more sense. There's a lot of items you need in your property as well to be a BTB approved. So for the pool, for example, you need depth markers, you need pool rules inside the property, you need exit signs, a fire exit plan, and many, many other things as well. Some of these I couldn't get on the island. So pool rules, for example, were out of stock. Other things they just didn't even have here. So I can order things on Amazon through Houston, and it typically takes about three weeks, but my shipper only comes uh, from Houston uh, two times a month. So as long as I can get it there on the Friday, right before they ship out on the Monday, typically it'll take another couple of weeks, but uh, three weeks is pretty much the average of what it takes. And if you miss something and you have to wait for the next shipment, obviously that can delay the process. So the sooner you can start, uh, obviously, the, the better that you're going to be. So just a couple of more tips to share. So if you are buying a property or selling it, for the seller, you should deactivate any trade licenses you already have. And if you're a new owner, you can reactivate it. The seller should also deactivate the gold standard. Basically, the rule here is not to keep things going. Otherwise, you're going to keep having fees that will be in arrears. So in real estate, it's always critical to have a great team, but even and more important when you're dealing with international real estate. So if you have any specific questions, either about getting a referral for someone to help with your paperwork or finding a suitable property for rental, make sure you reach out and I hope to see you soon here in Belize.